I think it's often lost that um, although people will often point fingers at Islam and claim that there it is a misogynistic faith and that it allows such permissions, actually there is a beautiful teaching within this that Imam Sahib you've identified, which is that there's also an element of protecting social harmony. Yes. And in such circumstances as, for example, after the Great War or the Second World War, when circumstances were such that there was an imbalance between men and women, where there were far more women than there were men, because of the loss of life during those wars, in fact, Islam does permit this, uh, does have this kind of facility available, but subject to, as you point out, very clear uh, conditions. There is another angle to look at this question, that uh, before Islam, there was no restriction at all. In the Bible, we can find that, uh, for example, the Dawud al-Islam had uh, 99 wives. So if somebody is Christian, or he belongs to any religion, in fact, in their religion, you will find the plurality of uh, the wives. There is no religion which, in which, you know, there is uh, a teaching that you should always have one wife. That's one thing. <coughs> Secondly, another angle is that there are certain situations where human rights demands that a person should be allowed to have a second wife. For example, the first wife uh, has become uh, ill, I mean, too much ill, and she cannot be, uh, perform her duties uh, as wife. Or she, the couple do not have the children, for example, and uh, there is some uh, problem with the wife, for example, that she can't uh, have the, their children. So and in that case, the question is whether the, the the husband should divorce that wife and then get married or it is better that he should keep both wives so that he, he can look after both and at the same time his uh, need uh, to have the or his desire to have some children that should be fulfilled. So there are many situations. Another reason for second marriage is, is and the Holy Prophet also uh, practiced that, that there are some ladies in the world who are maybe very poor and they, they need some sort of help from, some, some, from society and some people. If there are some people who can look after more than one uh, ladies, and there are so many ladies who need such uh, uh, you know, uh, help, assistance, especially if they have children, nobody is there to look after them. So now if, some, if uh, you know, one man is able to look after another family, and also the consent is also given by the first wife as well, then what is, the, uh, what is wrong in that? Dr. Saab, uh, linking into that, obviously people viewing this may see it as a kind of uh, as lascivious provision within the religion of Islam, but far from it. In fact, it's there to protect the dignity mm -hmm. of women and the dignity uh, that one avails of hum you know, humankind. And so this is quite closely linked to that. That's right. I mean, uh, as we have talked about uh, times when there are more women than, than men, then this certainly is a protection uh, for their chastity, uh, not only for their chastity, but we should remember that with marriage comes great responsibility. And it is not that you are responsible uh, towards your wife, but also towards her family. So this is a, a wide concept that the man is taking on this responsibility of taking on further responsibilities towards his uh, wife or wives, and also towards uh, the, the, their families. She may have children that the man has to also be responsible for. So it is a warning as such that only you are given this permission in very exceptional circumstances and you, if you avail this uh, situation then you are increasing the responsibilities that you must have of equal treatment to your wife and to their families as such. Mm -hmm. And uh, Hazrat Khalifa al masih in his Friday sermon has also pointed out what our responsibilities are towards our wives mm -hmm. but also to, their pa to her parents they are like our own parents and therefore our responsibility financially, morally towards them is of the same power. So it is taking on a very great task mm -hmm. and uh, one must think twice, thrice before he makes that decision mm -hmm. and is able to fulfill the heavy responsibility that is placed on his shoulder. Mm -hmm. In fact, there is one hadith which says that uh, if a person has two wives and he does not treat them equally, on the day of judgment he will come that one part of uh, one side of his will be paralyzed. So this is, uh, s uh, you know, so mm. much importance is given mm. to uh, uh, give equal treatment to, to the wives. Actually, this permission for the second marriage it goes in favor of the ladies. You know, if you think, if that example which was has been quoted earlier on, mm. if a lady is unable, 
uh, to uh, you know bear a child and the f uh, husband would like to have the child now what is the choice one is to divorce as it has been mentioned mm. in that case if that is done that poor lady will be left isolated in society everybody knowing that she has been divorced because she cannot become the mother so it means the chances for her to get married again mm. will be no more there mm. nobody would like to get married to that lady mm. and she will be just left in society helpless you know without mm. any help and support mm. so in that case islam says that well remaining in the same house but the second permission could be granted i may add also here that if say the because of the husband the children are not there then islam gives the right to the lady that she can also if she wants to she can get separation from the husband and get married to somewhere else mm. if they would like to have the children mm. so the rights are equal for mm. men and women that is the beauty of islam that very minutely going into detail equal rights have been given to both of them jazakallah